I want to bring in um, uh, a, a great filmmaker, an incredible journalist, uh, Mike Cernovich, who made the movie Hoax, that was about exactly these types of issues, an embellishment of the truth. Uh, in some ways, some call it fake news. Mike, you've been watching this whole thing uh, over these last several weeks. What's going on in your mind as we're watching these headlines? Well, we're learning more than ever that you have to look behind the headlines. You can't just trust what they say. For example, uh, the New York Times reported that Donald Trump had a financial interest in a pharmaceutical company that made chloroquine. And I go, well, that's interesting. I wonder what that is. And then I went through and pulled up Trump's financial disclosure and then the prospectus for the mutual fund that he owned. And you realize it's maybe 100 bucks, maybe $200, some kind of trivial amount. And so what's, what's wait, frustrating wait, wait, wait. Take it back. About take it back. Are you telling me there are headlines about the fact that there may be a vested interest of our president, that he is only talking about chloroquine because he has an investment in it? And, and, and run those numbers by me again and how you found them. Sure. So the New York Times wrote this big article that yeah. trended on Twitter, top story, blockbuster, the orange man, you know, yeah. orange man is bad. We got him again. And in it, they said that he owned a, a stake in Sanofi, which is a, a French pharmaceutical company. And I thought, wow, OK, um, that's interesting. And people are going nuts. I can't believe it. People that I respect, by yeah. the way, this is what this was said is, to me, too. Yeah, people that I'm like, wow, this is a credible person. Lawyers that if my life were on the line, I would hire. And I'm like, okay, I wonder what's really going on. I'll look into it. And then I go, well, let me find Trump's financial disclosures. And it turns out the disclosures will give a range of what he owns. And it said that he owned between $1,000 and $15,000 in a Dodge and Cox mutual fund. I'm like, okay, so at most he owns 1000 to 15000 uh, 15, oh, yep. And then I went to the Dodge and Cox prospectus for that fund, and 2.9% of that fund is invested in the stock of the company that makes chloroquine, which, by the way, is generic. So there's a whole rabbit hole you go down. But if you just look at the very numbers, you're talking about Trump indirectly at most owns a couple hundred dollars and the maker of chloroquine <laughs> via a mutual fund that everybody, nobody knows what's in your mutual fund anyway. Right, nobody does. Right, and then when you go further down the rabbit hole, you realize it's generic drug anyway, that the pharmaceutical maker has been giving it away. They've been giving everything they can anyhow. So we're talking, you know, 10 20 $30. But that was the blockbuster story of the night. And as so often happens, every time you look behind a story, you're just, what is this? There, there's nothing, there's nothing behind it. And, and, you know, it's not like the news is want for dramatic stories to tell to try to get you to tune in, right? I mean, there is plenty of drama out there. What this says to me is either a team of people or at least one very dogged reporter went so far out of their way on a mission to try to find some connection to chloroquine, which says to me, Mike, someone is sending them on that mission, right? Someone is saying to the media, we've got to knock down this chloroquine thing, so see if you can find some connection between Donald Trump. And you and I are both reporters. This is how this works, right? This is what this tells us. Behind the scenes, someone's got it out for chloroquine. Am I wrong? You're not. I mean, here's the way to look at it. There were four reporters on the byline, including Ken Vogel, who is, in fact, an excellent reporter. So I would love to see who told him, hey, but because he's one of the few reporters that I respect in the corporate media. And I was like, Ken, what is his name doing on this this article? And here's what's worse. And I wrote about this in another article at CernerVich.com. They're all omitting off-label use untested drug, unproven drug. No, it isn't untested. It is tested. It is proven. It's been used for how many years? People take it like, in some cases, when you're traveling to Africa, you take it the way you might take a seasick medication because of its anti-malarial functions. So it isn't untested. It is unproven. And then you read it. What I do when I teach people to look at the news is how many articles about chloroquine mention off-label use? None. They just say, well, the FDA hasn't nearly approved it in a study that takes seven years of right. the drug. But, but, but off-label use is completely appropriate. So they, right. they are. There is some kind of targeted attack on this. 
Well, I appreciate you bringing that story to us, Mike. And of course, you know, digging deep. I know that takes work to get, you know, all the way through to how the mutual fund worked and the breakdown. I think that was really important because once again, here we are watching the manipulation of the news. Okay, I guess you could say he's invested in Sanofi, you know, in a in a little tiny particle in a mutual fund he has a few thousand dollars in so 29 to 435 dollars hardly something that i think we call trump a billionaire hardly something that should really be on the richter scale of importance mike you do a lot of research like this how do we follow the work that you're doing because i know you like to do the investigation to make sure you get it right so where can we find you in the work that you're doing Sure. So I just released a movie, Hoaxed Movie, which covers the whole history of media as propaganda. We talk about everything from how wars have been started to the modern narratives that we see that often end up not being true. And we we talk about it philosophically and broad based, but we use uh, specific stories. So for example, if we were doing a sequel to Hoaxed, we would talk about this chloroquine story. We would talk about how the media, they mislead you, how they leave out material information, how they spend things way out of context to make things look that much worse than it already is, which, as you guys all know, you know, I've done reporting on SB 76 in California. I, that's how I kind of found my way into, um, you know, your work is I've just been reading reporting that was talking about people like they were just monsters. And I thought, well, okay, pff, there's monsters meeting in California and Sacramento. I might as well get on right. a plane. That's and, a news you story. Know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's what led me into this world is you read about the whole group of people who are demonized. And, and now what, what's so amazing is that same group of people is being demonized about coronavirus which came from China, but already people are trying to blame the people that they, you know, the vaccine people or whatever, they, the terms that they use, that I, the slurs. Yeah. That they, and I'm like, what are you talking about? There's no vaccine even yet. There's not even a debate to be had, but they're already like, we're going to tee up on these people who have nothing to do with this virus. China does. And yeah. what, so, so my reporting is whenever you tell me these people are the worst of the worst. I'm like, well, okay, then uh, that's where I want to go. I want to meet those people because, th and that's what you notice too, because you've done reporting too, is yeah. your, your background reporting is, that's where the stories are. Yeah. And now so much of the news is not about the people being reported on. So much of the news is like meta news where you have to debunk all of the stories that the news is telling you about these other people. Right. People you don't meet. ER rooms you're not in. You know, images from other countries being placed in as though they came from here. Mike, thank you for that great report. And, you know, hopefully we can get you on more often. Um, it's been a lot of fun and certainly great to see the actual numbers. So keep up the good work and hopefully everyone out there. I think uh, I've watched Hoax. It's a great film. Uh, and it really does lay out the tricks that they use in the media. I used to be in that media, remember? I worked for the Doctor's Television Show. I won an Emmy Award, though I felt very ethical in most of what we did on that show. I'm very, very proud of. There are tricks and things that are used to try and heighten the sensation. And sometimes we're a little bit outside of where the facts may be. So take care, Mike. Keep up the good work. My pleasure. If you like that clip, then be sure to check out our live broadcast of The High Wire every Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific time. You can watch it on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, and Twitter. We'll see you there.